in town would come to help celebrate. Uh, in fact, on his 82nd birthday, uh, President Hoover came. Mina, too, became a pillar of the community, raising money for charity and frequently entertaining at Seminole Lodge. The Edisons were the town's royal couple, bringing fame and excitement to the sleepy little village. In 1916, they managed to bring in the biggest name in the car business, Henry Ford. And not just for a visit, but to stay. Henry Ford's Florida retreat, The Mangoes, is a nine-room house nestled on three and a half acres of tropical gardens. The land is beautiful riverfront property with enough mango trees to give the house its name. But the house itself is little more than a cottage. While the climate offered the perfect escape from a Michigan winter, Ford could have built a larger and more impressive home anywhere in the Sunshine State. There was, however, one feature of the mangoes that Ford could not duplicate anywhere else. The next door neighbors, Thomas and Mina Edison. We did many things together. That was the reason for coming here, just to be with Mr. Edison. In fact, they bought the house, uh, this house, uh, the house next door, uh, just so they could come every February to be with Mr. Edison on his birthday. Henry and Claire Ford bought the mangoes in 1916 for a modest $20,000. The wood-shingled arts and crafts house was perfect, not only because of the neighbors, but because its casual design was wide open to the great outdoors. And the outdoors was Ford's favorite place to be. The large back porch looked over the river and gave Ford a place to do some serious bird watching. The center of the home was the living room, where the Fords did most of their entertaining. It was a good bit smaller than their field room in Michigan, and it featured a classic arts and crafts design, wide solid wood window trim and floors, and a brick fireplace with a keystone design. The mantel was a custom-built two-layered affair. The antique grandmother clock by the door kept the Fords on schedule, even when vacationing. The furniture was comfortable and easy to move, which was handy since the Fords often cleared the floor for square dancing. His guests would dance in the living room, would dance on the wide porches, and uh, music was very much a part of a social event there at the Ford House. The music was provided by Edison's phonograph, and Ford himself was the caller. Sometimes the dances were held next door on Edison's breezy pier. The Ford's small dining room was Clara's space, where she often played her spinet piano. The rest of the room was crammed with English furniture Clara had fallen for during a trip to England. Queen Anne chairs, Wedgwood china, and Sheffield silver had the room fairly humming rule Britannia. When the Fords weren't dining in cramped English splendor, they were often dining in the wide open spaces. The Fords loved to camp, and they often took the Edisons, of course, and other friends. They would go all over the Northeast.